Hello, my name is Sue Lewis and I'm going to be taking you through how you can make the most of the Career Pilot reporting zone in this webinar recording. So Career Pilot is a website and there's the web address there. Just to say there's a free website and it's free in the south of England area because it's co-funded by 20 universities and six NCOPs. What I'm going to do in this session is tell you how Career Pilot can be the centre of your careers programme and how it can support Gatsby. Take you through how the Career Pilot uh, reward, reporting zone works, but also show you how you can access reports and users. So I will be referring to the Gatsby benchmarks as we go through, and you'll see them reflected in different screens I'll be showing you. So just to explain a little bit about Career Pilot, it is a whole suite of resources. We have a student zone, a reporting zone, the advisor zone, there's lots of teaching materials and lesson plans, and a parent zone. We're also part of a national careers and enterprise company project looking at developing a whole school approach to personal guidance, and I'll mention that at the end. So the whole of Career Pilot can really contribute to you as a school putting a stable careers program together. We're also an award-winning website in 2018 when the Careers Development Institute Award for a careers and employability website. So today we're focusing on the reporting zone. But I will start by just explaining some of the key things about Career Pilot. So Career Pilot is aimed at 11 to 19 year olds in the south of England, although it is available if you are external to us, but there is a subscription charge for that. So what we're trying to do is put all the information in one place for young people. So there's one site that lead them to other information should they want to go to other places like UCAS, for example. So the site has two parts, a lot of information and tools. But if they sign in, which they do here, they can just register straight onto the site, then they can access the career tools. And the career tools is where they can actually personalize the things that they're interested in, my job sectors, my qualifications, and that creates a report. And the report data is what populates the reporting zone. So if your students haven't signed in, and they're not tagging things as they go through the site, then you know you won't have the information in your reporting zone. I'm just showing you also where the advisor zone and the parent zone can be accessed. And you don't need to log in for those, you can just go straight in. So some of the highlights of Career Pilot, if you're not sure, if you don't know it very well, we've got popular tools like job sectors, 800 job profiles, course search, provider search, qualification planner, over a thousand video stories, and they're all in our top bar. We've also got a three-stage process, and some of those tools will be shown again as part of our process. What we're trying to do is encourage students to take charge of their own careers by always following a process when they're trying to plan their careers, starting with themselves, what skills have you got, what qualifications, exploring your options, and then planning your next steps. I'll show you more of these in a minute. But they can also go straight in and look at a particular qualification pathway they're interested in and find a lot of advice and support to help them with that. Career Pilot can be used progressively across all your groups within a school and a college. And what we've done to help with that is we've got activities for different year groups. So there'd be five or six suggested activities, depending on the age, stage, and decisions the young people are making. To support that in the advisor zone, we've got introductory presentations that go with each of these, one for every year group. So that could help tutors that have got to deliver um, careers-related information. As I mentioned before, the career tools forms a report. So it's quite detailed. You can add advisor comments and have all the things they've been tagging. So it fits very much with Gatsby, addressing the individual needs, finding out what individual students want, and then actually really supports personal guidance. Because if they've done some of this work before personal guidance, you've got a lot of information you can start to use. But you can also record your personal guidance reports and actions on Career Pilot. So there's a continuation of the report. So the report moves up every year, so they can have a snapshot saved every year, but then they've got a live report they can keep changing and adapting. So I'm going to talk to you now about the reporting zone and how you can complete some of the processes uh, that, are, um, that are offered through the reporting zone. So you can access it by completing a data sharing agreement, and you can request that um, through the advisor zone. There'll be a, one of the tabs in there says reporting zone, and you can request free access if you're in the south of England. 
what we'll then do is ask you to tell us who should who should we send a password to and they become the password keeper in the system then students they register themselves through the main site you can't register them through the reporting zone they register under career pilot um, and as part of the registration they'll put themselves in their year group so they'll be in year 11 for example the keeper the password keeper can actually set up um, additional groups so for example they'll put themselves in year 11 you can now subdivide them into tutor groups or pupil premium groups and this keeper can also set up staff so that they can access the groups that they should see. So it might be that I would get access to year 11 as I'm a tutor in year 11, or I might just get access to 11SL, for example. So you can control the access that people get. Then if I am a teacher and I've got access, I can view any students' reports in the groups that I've been given access to. And I can add any advisor comments to students' reports. So that's the sort of overall structure of the reporting zone. You can move, once you've got a login for the reporting zone, you can then move between both sides of one login. So, for example, this person, uh, you can see if you've got access, you're in, um, and there's various things then you can see in the reporting zone. But if you now want to look at the student area and maybe play with those, some of those career tools, you can click on student site and then you'll be straight into the student area. And then if you click on admin under your name, then you're back in the reporting zone. So you can toggle, if you like, between both sides with one admin login. So here's the reporting zone, and there's different functions. The orange area, more like admin, and the blue ones are reports. So I'm just going to show you some of the admin tasks you can do. So you could view or add staff. You could view or amend students. You could put users into tutor and other groups. So let me just explain how you could do that. This is how you could find the student's record and look at their details, and maybe change their details if you need to. So you've got to users. You could search for a student, or you could search by year group, and you'll see a whole list there. What we suggest you do is always try to ask the students, have they got registration on CareerPilot? So we don't want multiple people with mul we don't want people with multiple accounts. We want them to have one account. So it's always quite useful to ask if they've already been registered on CareerPilot if they can't get in. And it's, sometimes it's because they put the wrong email address in. So this user function is quite useful because you can go in and see what they've put in, click here, see their record. And then, if necessary, you can change the email address. We often find they leave out .co.uk or they've written it in the wrong way. So the first thing you can do if students have got a login issue is go to users and see what they've put in and see if you can do anything to sort that out. Just to remind you, students can only set themselves up on Career Pilot. You can't actually set them up from your report zone area and you can't change their passwords. They have to do that through forgotten password. That's why this is useful for sometimes to check if that email address um, that they've used is going to work and they can send a forgotten password request to it. Administrators, so there's any sort of teaching staff in a, uh, in a school or college, you can set up any teachers. So this is the way you do that. You go to administrators, click on new users, and then you get a form like this put in the details of the person you're setting up. And then you have to allocate them a role. And there's two main roles. A school admin sees everything. So they can see all students in the school or college. A teacher will only be able to see the groups that you allocate them to. So you can decide what sort of access you give them. And then when you click on send password, they'll be sent a password, which they activate the link, and then they can get in and see whatever groups you've, uh, you've assigned to them. I mentioned earlier you can manage groups, so they will have put themselves in a year group. You can now actually subdivide them into tutor groups or pupil premium or whatever you want to do. If you want to view a group, you can go to the group function, manage groups, and then you can look at a whole year group like year 11. You can see there's 115 students there. What I can do now is look at that group and see who's in it and which teachers are assigned to that group. 
I can also do some actions where I can actually start to allocate teachers to a group. So a teacher cannot see anything, even if you set them up, unless you've assigned them to a group. So this is the way you do that. You can click on the teacher you want to add to this particular group. If you want to set up a new group, so you don't want them in, in uh, you want them in your groups, but you also want them in teacher groups, then if you go to new group, add in data, like the name of the group, you can filter the list by a year group, and then click on the students you want to add that group. There could be multiple groups in the system. So you could have a try, if you've got a login for the reporting zone, you could have a try of doing that, where you could add a new group in Manage Groups, give them a title, uh, and add some students to it, just to try that out. In the Advisor Zone, I know I'm giving a lot of information here, but in the Advisor Zone, you will find a user guide, which is about the reporting zone. So this, this video will be available in that space. So some other things in the reporting zone, you can look at reports by group or by individual. So I was just going to explain to you how information gets into a group on CareerPilot. So in different parts of CareerPilot, there's different activities, and quite a lot of them will allow a student to actually indicate which parts they're particularly interested in. So if they're looking at jobs, they could say which jobs they like, and they'll be added to their career tools. So in our Start With You section, there'll be quizzes to help them get started, and then explore your options. There'll be searches for jobs or courses, apprenticeship vacancies. And when they're in there, there'll be buttons like this where they can actually click on the things they're interested in, and they'll be added to their career tools. And these are the things that are populated in your reporting zone. So for example, uh, the job sectors, which fits with Gatsby 2, learning from careers and labor market information, has uh, 19 job sectors. If they click on a job sector, they have the option to add that whole job sector to their career tools. And they could do that by clicking here. We often ask them things like how definite they are about it. Are they just exploring or are they definitely interested? Because it's kind of useful to know when you're doing guidance, find out how committed they are to that particular thing. They can also do it at the job profile level. So every job profile uh, has information about the job, has labor market information about where it's going to grow, where the jobs might be, has video stories. And the pink bit here shows the skills required for the job alongside the skills that they've put into the our skills map. So here too they can add this particular job into their career tools. So then in the career tools under my job sectors they've got any sectors, any jobs, and we've got a job sector quiz and you can see there's the results of that here too. And you can see all this through the reporting zone. So you can see reports by group or by individual. If you want to find a group, you just click on the group you particularly want to see, and you'll have a range of options of reports you can look at. I'm just going to show you the job sector report. So this is a year 11 report, and you can see here which students are interested in which job sectors and how committed they are. They're definitely interested or they're just exploring. This report can be downloaded. So you could actually play with the data in a spreadsheet format. You can use these sort of reports to help decide what encounters with employers you might offer to particular students. If you know you've got a lot of students who are interested in hair and beauty, you might get those students together to do that session. It can also help you to identify the areas the students are not choosing, and that might be because they don't know enough about it. So last year, a low carbon agreement was coming up quite low, um, this year might have changed to the greater effect, but you can then target information so they are informed about a, a particular job sector. You can also look at a report of the things they've completed on CareerPilot. So, for example, if you set a homework activity or even in the classroom when you expect them to do it, you could just be checking to see who's done what. You can look at their report from here as well. The Qualification Planner also helps to get data into the reporting zone. This is our planner. What they can do is indicate whether they've, they're doing something, how they've done it, or they're considering it for the future. 
and whenever they tag those things that appear in their qualifications for all to be visible through the reporting zone. When they've added something into my qualifications, they can also then add predicted and actual grades. So the idea is they were housekeep every year they use career pilot. So it might be predicted in year 11 and then actual in year 12. The find a provider tool, when you use the list view, they can actually again tag any providers they are doing already, considering or applied to. And that information is saved for them and you can see as well. So the career tools reports, uh, some are only visible by individual, like the skills maps. The rest I'm showing you here are available for view by group. One I haven't mentioned yet is My Next Steps, which is the last one on that list, which I'm just going to show you now. So this is a sort of quiz format to try to find out the intentions of students to progress to level three and eventually into some sort of higher education. So ask some questions about what they intend to do, what they see as the benefits or the barriers. And that's really useful then to find out what particular things might be preventing your students from progressing. So you can see a whole report about it here and think about how you might intervene. And I've used some of this data across different year groups to find out what is the common barrier across multiple young people, across multiple schools on a particular NCOP project. So it's just useful to use the data in those sort of ways. And obviously, um, Gatsby is quite keen that we look at evaluation information and think about how we're going to deal with it, what actions we might take. So I want to just talk now about reports by the individual. So all the things you've been able to see will be visible um, by the actual individual student. So if you go reports by individual, you could pick up a particular student. There's certain things you can see. This one I think is the most popular and most useful, where you can see the whole report and also add any comments, like tutor comments or guidance advisor comments. This is where you can see any previous reports. This is where you can download the report and then save it and maybe send it to a parent or use it on parents' evening. And this is where the skills map um, is visible to be visible by individual. So the skills map, just to mention that quickly, this is a popular tool and it's a way to help students realise they've often got an awful lot of skills. So they might not realise that. So we ask them what they've done in their life, their learning and maybe their work, their post-16. And then when they've given us the answers, we tell them what skills they've probably used already. And then we show them a skills bank of all the skills, examples generated from the quiz against each of these skills. They can then add their own examples, maybe Duke of Edinburgh or something we haven't asked them. They can start to build up their own skills entries too. And that will show in the skills bank. So in the reporting zone, in the individual report, you'll be able to see the skills map. A report or you can see it um, yeah that you can see it as a skills map report or you can see it when you click on view full report this is also where you can see not only the full report but you can see any comments that have been attributed by a staff member to the student so it might be an, a t tutor or a guidance advisor and you can also set up actions here with the student they can also do that from their own site too so anything that's added here as a comment is visible to the student and any other teacher who's got access to that particular student in the reporting zone. And you can have multiple comments. They're all attributed to the person who wrote them. So you can see a whole conversation that uh, has happened about that student and their career's work. You can also, in the report, uh, add links. So it makes it a much quicker way of writing a guidance report because you've got all the information there about the job sectors they're interested in. So you can write quite a short report, but also put links to things you want them to follow up on. So for example, you can write some text and then add an individual, uh, sort of internal link by highlighting the bit of the text you want this bit to be related to. Click on the internal link and then any part of career pilot could be linked to here. So if you want them to find out about apprenticeships, you can put a link in to a part of career pilot you want them to explore. You can also put an external link in. So if you want them to visit an open day at Exeter University, you could get the address for that, the URL, stick that in, and then there'll be a link to that particular 
um, university's open day page. So you could now, if you've got a link to the reporting zone, you could uh, log into the reporting zone. You could have a little play with some of these things. Look at reports by group. Look at reports by individual. Just a few things to tell you that are coming soon in the reporting zone. Uh, Skills Map is having a bit of work at the moment. And by September, we're hoping that uh, a school, college, or an NCOP could add an activity that they've done with the student and that would appear on their Skills Map. So it might be just taking a load of students to Rolls Royce, so you'll be able to put an entry in, say what the activity was, when it happened, what skills to give the students, and then attribute it to a whole group like the Holy Eleven, or one group, or a particular individual. Currently, start with a subject, which is a tool we have. Uh, it doesn't actually create anything in the create tool, so we're looking at a way that any any of the subjects the students want to add as a favourite subject they can put in their career tools. Another big development is the Crazy Enterprise Company project I mentioned at the beginning, which is called the Pathway Planner. That will be available now to schools outside the pilot. We've just been piloting it with six schools, but we're now making it available, and that will be a key part of the reporting zone. So I'll just show you that quickly. So our bid to the Crazy Enterprise Company was to try to pilot a whole school approach to delivering guidance. So we've been trying that out in six schools with 60 year 11s and 40 year 12s with the ideas rolled out to those year groups, uh, whole year groups next year. So the model has been all students get a one hour structured pre-guidance session using Career Pilot, which is about their option. Towards the end of that hour session, it takes about five, 10 minutes, they get to use the new thing, which is the electronic pathway planner tool, which is a triage tool that gives a red, amber, green score to the students so they can see how ready they are for their pathway. But also for the guidance advisor, you can see this in the reporting zone. And then you can allocate guidance according to need. Then you might use career ballot when you're doing guidance. You could record the reports on it. And then three weeks later, we're training tutors. It takes about half an hour to train them to actually Look on, look at career pilot, talk to the student, ask them three questions, and then if they're at all worried about them, loop them back in for additional guidance. We've also had e-guidance and drop-in guidance as well. So this, as you can see, really meets Gatsby 8. I'm just going to run you through some parts of that. We've got a nice little animated video, which is aimed at students, trying to help them to understand how important careers is and how they can manage their own career by doing a few things, like knowing themselves, doing stuff, building their CV, know all your options, and use your supporters. And that video is, is available now if you want access to it. We've also got structured presentations, as I mentioned, for year 11 and year 12, which are about all the options available. They're quite interactive, uh, but they also have an element of time where they can play with Career Palette and add their own things they're interested in. At the end of that one hour session, they could do the pathway planner, which is our new thing here, which will ask them about the path. They show the pathways available to them and ask them which they are interested in. And if they say they're definite or considering, they'll do a little quiz, which will ask them about that pathway to see how ready they are for progressing. So it might be about A-levels. I have an idea what subject I want to do for A-levels. And each of these questions is weighted at the back end. The students can see the score in and they get a result. How ready are you for your pathway? You might be red, amber, green. Everybody's going to get guidance. So at the back end in the reporting zone, we have a new bit called the Pathway Planner. And this is where a guidance advisor or careers leader could look at the results, see what pathway students are interested in, but also see how ready they are for their pathway. And in the pilot project, if they're green, they've got 20 minutes. The amber, they've got 30 minutes. If they're red, or additional needs, or looking at apprenticeship or college to get an hour. On the system, you can also book guidance to so you book the different types of guidance. You can book in, drop in, self-referral. So all that's recorded in the system, and the student have their own timeline, which shows where they were in the pathway plan on a particular date, what interventions have happened, and where they are now. So you're trying to get them to a point where they're green or amber before they get their results. And that really helps with Gatsby 3 about uh, individual needs. So you've got a record here of how you're managing individual needs and the inter interventions you're providing to those students. 
So the advisor zone is where you're going to be able to find information about how you access the reporting zone. Also about the pathway plan I've just mentioned. And there are all, all sorts of other resources in there too. In particular, some new things which are related to Gatsby 4 called the subject specific resources. Currently, we have put together 24 of key stage 4 subject specific resources. It about 20 minutes and they link with a particular aspect of the curriculum that a subject teacher is having to deliver. So that clearly links with Gatsby 4. And if you want access to those, if you go to the advisor zone, you can request a download of all those materials. We've also got five week PSHE programs for every year group, which have all the resources. And we've got 20 minute teacher time activities. So everything's related to careers. S uh, some are just done in the classroom, some require a computer. We've mapped Career Pilot to Gatsby and to Compass. So if you are completing your Compass, I'll send this out to you. can request, the, request this. Um, if you've attended our webinars, then you will be sent this automatically. So when you complete in Compass, if you're using Career Pilot, you can refer to, to it using this document. So that's the end of this webinar now. Thanks for coming along or listening to this video recording. Uh, we have got helplines available 9 to 3 in term time. 